to uh, section 7.3, the eigenvalue method for solving uh, linear systems of differential equations. And so we're going to use what we've learned in eigenvalues from previous sections to solve a system of first order linear equations with distinct eigenvalues. And this will include complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's start off by remembering our system that we were working on last time. The homogeneous system was this guy right here. And we could write that as a matrix equation where x vector prime equals ax or px, depending on what you want to call it, where x was x vector was the x1 function, x2 function, x prime vector is x1 prime and x2 prime. And in this case, the A or P matrix, whatever you want to call it, is 2, 3, 2, and 1. Okay. So last time we examined the system and this exact same system, and we told you that the solutions were negative e to the negative t, e to the negative t, and 3e to the 4t, and 2e to the 4t. And we even verified that those were, in fact, solutions. But if they're not given to you, how do you come up with those guys? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's take the matrix A here, 2, 3, 2, 1. Let's find his eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. And then we'll see if we notice anything really cool. So let me slide this up so we have a little bit of room to work. Again, remember that eigenvalues, eigenvectors are something of the form AX equals lambda X. So the matrix multiplication is really equivalent to a scalar multiplication. And if we um, did a little bit of matrix algebra, A minus lambda I times X is equal to the zero vector. A couple of baby algebra steps takes us to here. So we remember that we needed to work with the A minus lambda I matrix, which would be two minus lambda, three, two, one minus lambda. And to find the interesting eigenvalues, we need to take the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to zero. So if I take the determinant of two minus lambda, three, two, one minus lambda, and set that equal to zero, I will end up with my characteristic equation. Let's do that. So we're gonna get two minus lambda times one minus lambda. minus six equals zero. And if we solve this guy, so we're gonna get lambda squared minus two lambda minus a lambda is minus three lambda. And then um, the constant is gonna be plus two minus six equals zero. So that's gonna be lambda squared minus three lambda minus four equals zero. And we're lucky because this guy even factors. And this should be minus four and a plus one. So our eigenvalues are four and negative one, respectively. Let's see what happens when we put in the eigenvalue of four. Again, we're looking for the a minus lambda i times the x equals zero. So if I do a minus four, i times the x vector is equal to the zero vector. We're setting up the system, sticking a four in here and augmenting by the zero vector. So two minus four is negative two, three, and two, one minus four is negative three. And if we put this in reduced row echelon form, we will get the matrix one, negative three halves, zero, 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 zero. So that's why I wanted you to do some row operations by hand so you could quickly do this without having to rely on technology. So that tells me I'm gonna need a parameter. And so I'm gonna call, you can think of it as X2, but um, because I've used X2 as a function here, I'm just gonna think of him as just B now. So B is gonna be my parameter. And since then I have this fraction here, I'm actually gonna let B be not T, but 2T. And then A will be 
when I solve this guy, he'll be 3t. So our eigenvector here is 3, 2. Okay. And that corresponded with the eigenvalue of 4. So let's put a thought bubble around that. Our other eigenvalue, by the way, is negative 1. Again, solving our system a minus a negative 1 times i, or a plus i times the x vector equals 0. And this x vector is not the same as this x vector, by the way. This was the function. This was just merely um, what we did back in uh, chapter four and five. Okay. So uh, we're going to end up with the system uh, putting in a negative one where lambda is. Two minus a negative one is three, three, zero, two, two, zero. And again, putting this into reduced row echelon form. And because Professor Boudreau made you do some of those row operations by hand, you can probably do this one in your head. So we could times by one third on this row and then do negative two times that row added to the bottom row, getting one and one. Therefore, my eigenvector is going to be t and negative t. Or in other words, t times negative one, one. So our eigenvector here is negative one, one, and that corresponded with the eigenvalue of lambda is negative one. Now, here's the important question. What does this all have to do with our solution to the original differential equation? Let's see if you can pick it out here. We'll give you a few seconds. Did you notice that the x1 vector solution is negative one was the e to the negative one here. So we had e to the negative one t and e to the negative one t. And the coefficients came from the eigenvector. And similarly, for the x2 solution, Notice that it's e to the 4t, lambda was 4. And the coefficients here were the eigenvector. Hmm. So that's pretty cool that we can find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors of this matrix. And that will lead us to the solution. We can then times this guy by C1 and this guy by C2, add them together, and then we've got our general solution. Okay. So we're going to focus on, uh, for this class, cases where the eigenvalues of the matrix are distinct or not repeated. Okay. Let's pause there and we'll uh, pick up in the next video.